Hi everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoy our shows, please like our videos and subscribe to our channel. And remember to hit the bell for notifications. And you can support us via PayPal, Patreon, Bitcoin, and through our website, ageoftruth.tv. Hello and welcome to this edition of Age of Truth TV. I'm Lukas Alexander in northern Germany between Hamburg and Berlin. It's the 28th of October 2020 and our guest today has been revealing fascinating hidden secrets and eye-opening information for many years. Black goo, transhumanism, AI, 5G, chemtrails, the money game, and the power elite control system, just to name a few. He's a physicist and a researcher. Harald Kautzwiller. Kautzwiller, that is the German wor way to say it. In English, I, th I think it would be Harold Kautzwiller. Yes, in general, this is what I used to be called. The Vella is gone. I got divorced a couple of years ago. I kept the name online for making it easier to, for people to find me, but it's about time to <laughs> go back to Harald Kautz like I was born. So actually, Harald Kautz. Actually, Harald. And just Harald, really. Thank you so much for inviting us here to your home here in actually the countryside in the middle of nowhere between Hamburg and Berlin in Germany. It's wonderful to meet you. It's wonderful to be here. So thank you very much. You're welcome. You have so many topics to talk about. You have been researching for so many years and you were also studying to become a physicist and you know so many things about the esoteric realm, about spirituality, about the occult, about robonetics, I guess you could actually call it, what, mm. whatever connects us to the elite plan to connect the human mind to AI. And there are so many things we want to get into. At the moment, we are late October, close to Halloween in 2020. And this year has been a 
really crazy, extraordinary and very difficult year due to the COVID-19 coronavirus. So it's wonderful to be close to somebody and be in the same room. So what is actually, if you could sum it up to begin with, we have a lot of things to cover. What do you think is really going on here in 2020? What is this all about what we're experiencing right now? Are we living in a, let's say, a cursed matrix, or is it how it should be? Well, what, what we do have, what we do see is the coronation of the new world order. This is what they try to get through. And this is not that we live in a matrix. Most of the things you kind of get from mainstream are upside down. It's what we, what we perceive at the moment is the attempt to establish a matrix to actually shut down the spiritual realm we come from and we partly still live in. It depends on the spiritual setup. And uh, at the moment they roll out the technologies that are necessary to actually replace us by avatars that run on computers. This is what's happening and they, they really have a hard time like, like all the monitoring and spying software um, the resolution of the radar systems monitoring single people, they don't work when people get too close to each other. So we have the social distancing laws to keep us at least one and a half meters away from each other because only then they can read our minds. So many, many things that come in a context of uh, COVID, for example, are actually something completely else, something connected to this rollout of... Uh, uh, a technological realm that tries to disconnect us from the divine and reconnect us to an AI-based hive consciousness. This is what we observe. So we see the COVID um, attack on human consciousness, war on consciousness, actually, because of the rollout of 5G with social distancing and then the rollout mm. of, the, of Elon Musk's satellite kill grid, as some researchers mm. call it, smart cities, smart meters, mm. what have you. Uh, yeah, it, it all links in. It's, it's one concept. Not everything. I, I don't really believe that Elon Musk is who he says he is and does what he does because when, he, when you see his rocket, rocket launches at a certain point, you, you have a mouse running over the rocket at 18 Mach speed at 20, 20 kilometers height. <laughs> so this is all scam, you know, what is displayed, what he does. What we do see is lines of satellites being distrib distributed, but I'm not even sure that they come from human resources. He's you know, part of the whole thing, like Bill Gates, of course. These are just puppets. You don't know the real players. And they are even not so important, even the, the, uh, if, you, if you come to, to the head of the human-run structure like the human pyramid that is a control and government structure um, they don't have to say too much as well uh, actually it's it's um, um, this is galactic and there are different forces within the universe that have different ideas of how humanity should continue and who would they be if, if you go into the New Age scene, you have all sorts of people channeling whoever um, um, is channeled like, like commanders of star fleets from different Cyrus system or, or Pleiadians. Um, I don't trust too much into channelings of that sort. But it's not necessarily just New Age channelers who talk about these things anymore. It is actually also, well, widely accepted by many people in the field of U UFO research yeah. and people who are into esoteric knowledge in, in general. I know you are as well. It's, it's a difficult situation. Saying that we are alone in the universe is totally crap. You know, we have 500 entries a day of things that are too big for a meteorite, but it, they don't crash down. This is what official monitoring of NASA displays in their data. So we are surrounded by other civilizations, but they all have these uh, contracts that 
force them not to interact with humans. They have a contract. Well, is that part of what they call the Galactic Federation of Light, where different Listen. species from different star constellations and, and different planetary systems meet? They have a representative, like a big galactic council. So, something like that. That could be one force, one side, and the other ones are more um, uh, individually working civilizations that are out there to harvest uh, raw materials from planets. So they're here to exploit Earth and they don't like us because we're too spiritual for them. From the original setup of the human design, we are too spiritual. Not at the moment. At the moment we are ways below our possibilities. Is it because we have empathy? And that is one part, but empathy is quite common even in between animals. What we do have is this direct access to become creational. Um, that is due to the genetics, that actually our consciousness is creating what we perceive and once we relearn to turn that around, that we consciously decide what to feel and what to think. Um, then the entire, we are not subject to reality anymore, then reality becomes subject to us and we will be creational. So when you say creational, do you mean it's because we can mate, we can have sex no. and reprocreate? No, we can move mountains. This is what is written in the Bible. Please talk about that. If you, if you go into the spiritual setup, a normal human, like we came out from 25,000 years of social engineering, from the deterioration from, from when we expelled from paradise. This is the, all the period of social engineering to limit our ability. So the way we came out from this is split into mind and emotion. And the two set up struggling with each other for dominance internally. This is how we experience ourselves, the way we were made not by nature, but by social engineering, by religions, by all sorts of influences. Human-made constructs. Human-made and non-human-made. This is the, the basic condition we need to deal with. When a human manages to revive his heart consciousness, the thoughts turn into something that is embedded in the heart consciousness and the emotion turns into something that is embedded within heart consciousness. So it becomes one. It is impossible to have a contradiction between the two. Um, and when you reach this condition that actually the main identification is with heart consciousness and the thought is a subterrane and the emotion is a subterrane, but because the identification is in the core, in the center, in the complexity of the heart consciousness. This binary thinking and the trinary emotion become part of the 12th star, of the lotus flower structure of the heart. You know, the 2 goes into the 12, the 4 goes into the 12, the 6 goes into the 12, the 3 goes into the 12. It's about symmetries of chakras, basically. So if the core identification is back in the heart, um, and all the rest becomes subordinated to it. Everything is in coherence. And when this happens, we unfold these creational powers. And when this starts, it's like that um, what happens to us next day is what we create for ourselves. Like if my heart is in abundance, next day somebody comes along and gives me 2,000 euros as a present. You know, this is kind of the, the easy way that starts to flow into our reality. Law of attraction. The law of attraction, um, law of resonance, what I send out comes back to me. We're extremely strong in manifesting these equivalences into our lives. This is how it manifests at the moment. But when this heart consciousness grows stronger, we eventually come into the position that to say, okay, I dematerialize and materialize somewhere else because the core connection is to the spiritual realm through the heart chakra. Because we are holographic in structure. Yes. 
as people. Yes. When you go close to the atom, it dissolves. And we are made of atoms. It's, it's, it, yes, yes. In a way, yes. The, the body, in any case, is just a projection of our consciousness. The entire reality is a projection of our consciousness. The core structure creating these holograms, these material holograms, is the DNA. And consciousness is the link between what we observe and the observer we are. So we create by observing through our DNA. So there is no reality we observe. There is only something we create by observing. And when this authority of being creational is back in the heart chakra, you can materialize an apple in your hand. You can change the color of your hair, whatever. This is being crea creational in the original sense. By the power of thought. Not thought. Thought is too limited by the power of heart consciousness. The thought is part of this, but thought alone, you know, uh, thought alone is uh, a psychopath. A psychopath is just identified with his mental field. Not psychopath, but a psychopath, you mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Per definition, somebody is, that is reduced to his mental field is a psychopath. He can be harmful or harmless, it doesn't make a difference. His mental structure or his spiritual structure is, he by identification is limited to his mental field. Mm -hmm. He doesn't feel anymore and his heart is dead. Could psychopaths in general be actually hijacked by, let's say, AI or archons, <laughs> archons, demons? Yes, yes. This is exactly what the social engineering was about for all those thousands of years. Heart consciousness is not compatible with AI. AI is binary. And if you want to hijack consciousness, you first need to degrade it to something that is equivalent to the hijacking signal. So uh, this is basically the separation they did. They can hijack our emotions because you have technical control of emotional fields. It's producible by antenna systems. You need a club leave antenna and you can project anger just like this. So they can hijack the emotions and they can hijack the thoughts because they are binary and they have binary signals out there. So this part is actually so similar to technical signals. This part of possible consciousness is so similar to technical signals that you can read out and play in and override and you still have the full illusion um, that the self experiences the programming code as his own thought. So the, the humans will not even be aware of the fact that they turn into the computer avatar that was designed to basically first um, um, predict their behavior, then by self-learning programs create a computer model with algorithms that becomes more and more and more like the personalities. The personality concept is binary. But this is what we're seeing a lot happening right now all, all over the world with, with, the, with this coronavirus hijack, really. We see the countries doing the same, the, the governments of different countries doing the same restrictions and the same what, what probably is a new world order takeover and these measurements and the mask wearing. Do you think that this is like a, a hijack, almost like well, directed energy weapons or harp technology used here to influence the mind or what you would call the easily suggestible? Um, what they need for, for the full rollout of the control grid is 5G. This is what exactly delivers the um, uh, electromagnetic field structure that is necessary for a complete readout and play in structure. So this is the core technology. The other things like HARP, it might be still in use, but it's the alpha beta version of a control grid. It only allows collective mind control. Like let's ignite riots, put in some anger. You know, this is something you can project from one big antenna in whatever the North Sea or um, 
it's not individual. If you want to have ind individual mind control, you need something that is on the spot targeting one single person. This phased is, arrays. This is phased ar array technology mm -hmm. uh, that does that. And this is why they need 5G. I'm not sure about the mask. Maybe the, they need the pandemic to create... Um, um, or not, not to create, to, to talk people into mandatory vaccinations and wearing a mask. It already was quite successful with the Spanish flu in the 20s. People died from bacterial co-infections. They caught because they were wearing masks. Everything we're seeing now has happened before. It's yes, just on yes, a bigger yes, scale. Yes. I mean, people don't have a very short-term memory, so they can't remember what happened in the past. Even what happened here in Germany with the Second World War, even the First World War. People can't remember that when, when, they, when they see what is going on, and that's actually what the governments may be implementing. They can't remember because they didn't live through it, and all they get is education in media, and education in media is done by people. So we, we live in the world we are fed with. How would you then say, if we are uh, in the middle of this war on consciousness and working through 5G and electromagnetic radiation even more so than we actually understand the AI grid as well, can we dissolve that or change the frequency so that we won't be affected by it through understanding this heart-based uh, frequency or energy that we can emanate, that we can use, that we can uh, aspire we, to? We need a bigger picture for that. We are at the moment on a path of ascending to higher densities and to more complex consciousness on our natural path. And this development of spiritual awareness go through different qualities. And the lowest one is the other responsible. It's a perception of reality where everything is shitty, kind of, but the other one is responsible for that. The material plane is responsible. So you look for a solution in, in the projection and you don't realize that actually you are the projector. When you come to self-responsibility, this is kind of the next density, you realize the entire reality is a projection of my spirit. If I want to change the reality, I need to work on my spiritual setup. I need to work on my self-healing and then I can focus completely on myself while in the environment miracles happen. Like everything kind of dissolves on its own. So for me personally, because I'm in this self-responsibility, I have arrived there somehow, um, it would be a big mistake to focus on 5G, to focus on world governments and start to get a fight with them because I would just give them my energy. I would just make sure that I continue in a realm where they exist and when, where they have power. I don't want to be there, so it's better to ignore them because if I ignore them, I don't have resonance with their reasoning, with their um, energies, with their whatever. I, I, I stop being in contact with the fruits of their spirituality of their thinking or their doing and then suddenly I, I stop interacting with the monetary system yeah. you've seen my garden bits and pieces and I now you're self-sustainable more or less more more and more it's getting better every year we still buy basics like oil because i couldn't afford an oil mill, oil mill till now um, and also i'm i'm kind of busy doing things in the public, so I can't invest 24-7 in, in being self-supplying. Self mm -hmm. uh, but in general, yes, we could survive the winter without anyone out there. Mm -hmm. No problem. Not as comfortable as with uh, going to shops to buy something, but if, if this uh, thing comes in that uh, only those who wear the mark of the beast are allowed to trade, I couldn't give a damn. That and wearing the mark of the beast, you refer to the coming COVID-19 vaccine that they talk about. This might be a core component. Yeah. A COVID pass they talk about. 
They, uh, now what they now do is uh, they need DNA data to be able to completely play as individual DNA. So they, they do this PCR test that actually was designed to harvest DNA. So they build up databases of who is who on DNA level and then they can modify and uh, improve their control system. So this is not about COVID. No. And, and do you think, I mean, hopefully there's going to be a change very soon. A lot of people are waking up, even though there's a lot of people who's fighting mm -hmm. for the system, on behalf of the system, believing the system. And it's also dividing people in general, even family members and friends and colleagues, what have you. And this is also what they want. They use this Hegelian dialectic always yeah. to divide and conquer and problem reaction solution uh, te uh, techniques and, and tactics. But I mean, you have also been involved in not only understanding you've, you've, you've studied to become a, a physicist, but going into the spiritual realm, you also became very involved in remote viewing, for example. But you also moved out here way beyond, let's say, as far away from the so-called grid. And there's not a lot of uh, radiation is not as strong here. The signal to a mobile phone, for example, is not is not that strong in, the, in this part of, of, of the country. But you talk about being attacked. And you've also talked about that you've had assassination attempts on your life. So when you talk about this, is this on a spiritual realm or would you say that this is on a physical realm? Does it happen in real life or is it within your, is it on another dimensional realm? Um, it started in real life. Um, it's like if, if you look at the dark hierarchy you know, the lowest levels are the human soldiers, like Blackwater, now Academy. You know, this is where the first um, problems I faced when I started to invest. It was way, way before I even got into really interesting topics. I just had a, a, a tiny little funny confrontation with Monsanto about some chemicals used in agriculture and suddenly you've got these five um, African style looking elder men facing you on the street every 20 minutes telling you in your face by the way you're a dead man and did they say that <laughs> yes and this is kind of the beginning and they tried to do it with poisoning just going into my garden and depositing pills with uh, strychnine on, on my vegetables that I then chewed and... Really? Them. So this is how it started. But somehow I was always lucky, you know. I just had a box with zeolite 20 centimeters next to me when, when I bit on that pill. So I just could spit out, shovel zeolite in and the cramps just didn't catch me. You, know? you had so, a physical reaction. Yes, yes. So this was the first one. I was not even on interesting topics. And whenever one level of the dark structure failed to get me, because some miraculous thing saved my life, the next level in the hierarchy jumped in. Okay, you didn't manage, don't try again, don't bother, you know, we've got better weapons upstairs. So this actually was a, a teaching environment where when the physical plane did not manage to get rid of us, uh, the spiritual realm jumped in, so so we had to deal with black magic attacks more than physical ones. So w we also want to hear about the the black magic attacks in that way. But first of all, why did why were you attacked in the first place by these physical humans? Why, why you? Are you that interesting? I don't know. They they seem to believe so. If but what did you do? I did from, from 2000 to 2012, I was in free energy research. I was putting the oil dominance of the monetary system into danger. Tesla 
technology. Tes Tesla technology, Schauberger technology, Wilhelm Reich technology, and I was with, I, I don't remember exactly, four companies who were about to bring something on the market. And it was working in those companies. Oh. And it was always like on a level where everybody above me either got killed or went to jail. I was all, all, always kind of the first one or in the hierarchy of the companies the, within the level that survived. And everybody above me either went to jail or got assassinated. Mm. So that was kind of... It wasn't even about spiritual things. It was just about stupid economy. Because free energy is something that is probably the most controversial because if people knew that you could tap into the ether and that we have free energy, then it would take down the whole oil uh, and coal yes. and electricity uh, monetary system. It's, and this is not even so important. They can print money. They don't need to earn it. So, uh, but what they need to keep under control is the belief of humans that scarcity is around. This is the spiritual aspect. Once you bring out free energy, it's a proof of the existence of abundance in nature. And this ah, it fucks up the spiritual control system to, to keep people in scarcity. It's fear, scarcity and uh, um, low vibrational emotional patterns that control, that keep people in this oppressed and sad state. And free energy would just be a proof of abundance in nature, and this is why they don't like it. So that was kind of the first thing. And then from 2012 on, um, I got more interested in medicine. I dropped free energy because I realized there's no way to make it at that point of history. So just keep your knowledge somewhere. Mm -hmm. One of the years in future will be time to reveal all this. So I just made my peace with waiting. And then you started talking about it publicly. Not so much. Here and there. But, you know, if, if, you, if you give concepts to people and then they try to bring it into the world because they are unexperienced on the spiritual plane and they get themselves killed, you know, you don't do that. I, I do things when there's a prospect a good chance that it will carry fruits and in this point of, of history free energy is not going to be fruitful because everything is surrounded with scarcity and when you bring abundance into a field of scarcity it's like matter antimatter it implodes destroys everything around and if it's big enough to destroy the scarcity then it destroys everything at the same time and things develop too fast and this is something I, I don't want as well, you know. So there's a perfect environment for free energy, but this is not given yet. But people, many researchers into this field also say that human beings had that ability themselves without even having to tap into the ether or whatever it is through, through a device or something. But that's ev that the, it even was something they were able to do through the pineal gland and the heart, heart chakra. What they, are your thoughts on that? They're two different, now we're talking free energy, they're two different concepts. You can steal from your brother, you can steal from your father. It's, it's fractal. You know, if, if you have a device that forms a whatever, a plasma vortex that has the same size, same structure, same frequency as plasma vortexes in the sun, you can have a non-local interaction. And through the quantum vacuum, you pull energy into the vortex you control in your machine. You just need to keep it a little bit too, too, too slow and too small so that it has the impulse to balance and pull in energy. This is kind of how you can pull from a brother or you go in the hierarchy um, to the fractal above, to the layer above, and you pull from the big to the tiny from, from you know, like, like pulling energy from a hurricane into a tornado that is embedded somewhere. And when you do this, you actually get the possibility to pull energy from source. This is when technology becomes spiritual. You need a certain spiritual setup to be the father to your machine. And then it starts running. I, I remember there was a 
somebody in Mexico living in a slum, his, his child was depending on machinery to stay alive and they had these power shutdowns every now and then. And whenever the, the electricity faded away, the son was in danger of dying. So he, he modified his, his uh, motorcycle just by, by giving a disbalance into the back wheel and then he gave it a kick and this motorcycle started to per per perpetuate and he was using it to create electricity for the, to keep his son alive. And this is love. He loved his son. <laughs> and, and this energy was absorbed by the machine and it, don't give a damn about the technical concept. It doesn't make a difference. Yeah, so this is pulling from source. It's a completely different structure of technology than pulling from a neighboring structure. This can be cold. You can have a, a dumb person operating a machine like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. so what's the significance of the pineal gland? Some people even suggest that in the old days, before the pineal gland was calcified through a genetically modified food and chemtrails and all of the things and the dumbing down and the, of course the fear attack constantly on the human mind throughout the, the, the many centuries now and religion. Back then they could move objects by the power of thought. Some people even say that the pyramids were built by people thinking about it to move the objects could also be alien technology or a mixture of that. Mm. What are your thoughts on, on this? Basically, the pineal gland can see longitudinal and can see scalar. So the wave patterns that are rejected, ignored by standard physics, become visible inside this eye. It really has the structure of an eye if you make a cross cut. It looks like an eye. But it sees different wave patterns. So with a longitudinal you actually can see through matter. So you can blindfold a child and if it's trained to see with a pineal gland with a third eye it can still ride a parkour on a bike without having an accident or distinguish colors and shapes. There are schools doing this. You get shitloads of YouTubes at the moment of children reviving these abilities. And with a scalar, actually, you also see things, but you see non-locally. And you see not in the now. So you can see the future, you can see the past, um, because of the, the scalar has a different access to space-time. The longitudinal is still bound to the now concept of space-time, that we live in a now, and then the next now comes, and then the next, but we always stay in the now. This is kind of the way space-time evolves, in a way, and we have a past. But the past is not the same like the now that was before. The past is a, is a concept of speed of light, and uh, it's difficult, you know, you, you, you can go into a higher dimensional understanding of realms from, from there, kind of. We're not doing this, it's too complicated. But do you think everything has already happened? Meaning that the past exists now uh, and the future exists as, as well, and the present? Um, you need to understand that there are two different times, two different concepts of time that we project on top of each other. One concept of time is the recursive nows. One now develops of the last now into the future now and then another now. This is a recursive process. It's within the mathematical realms, these recursions. And at the same time, once these recursions construct a 3D with space and time, um, you also have basically exchange of information that is based on um, two light cones, the future light cone and the past light cone, with the light traveling with the speed of light and with minus speed of light into the past. So if you take this now, we can make this with, this is now. And then you have the future and the past. And from the now you've got a wave pattern going into a future event and a wave pattern going into a past event. Changing both, 
patterns being sent back, creating the next now. So what, what the physicists call the um, work null, what is work null, the, the initial explosion of the universe, what is this in English? Big Bang? The Big Bang. The Big Bang is not at the beginning of time. The Big Bang is at the middle of time. The Big Bang is always in the now. And from there the past is growing like the future is growing and the universe is expanding. This is something they completely got wrong because they are in this overlaying projections of the two time structs, time, time uh, qualities. They think that they need to go into the past to find the origin, but the origin is always in the now. This is why the creational concept in the Bible is more accurate than the physicist's concept. Because you can jump in at any now as a divine influence and become creational. And also and change expands. the past. Yes, it's changing with it. So it's not even just going back in time through a time travel device that no, they no, say the military has. It's completely different. And they know some of it. And I need to be careful because I don't want to feed these scientists with ideas because they are running on dark paths at the moment. Maybe they already know. I mean, at least those working perhaps at CERN in the, on the, on the they, uh, underground levels. And yes, yes, yes. They, they, they do kind of interesting things like, like shooting people into the past with shock waves, um, lowering the space-time density, the energy density, and then they have one kicking impulse going through a group of people. And this shock wave is transporting them into the now that is at the same place, but at the energy density they artificially created. So, so basically it's like a dialing code. You take the energy density of a certain point in space-time and then you shoot a shock wave through them and they reappear in the place where the energy density is also there. Are we talking about CERN now? Yes, this is what they do. The Large Hadron Collider. Yes, yes. It's all published. It's fucking published. It's so, it's so crazy. You know, they do this, they put out the papers fully knowing and trusting that nobody can read and understand them. They say that they're going to switch on the collider next year in 2021. Do you think this has something to do with what is going on in the world right now with the coronavirus and the Possible. power structure? Possible, yes. Because they talk about, of course, finding this, wanting to find this God particle. But many researchers say that they open portals to allow more demonic archon entities into this realm or to change the timeline in some kind of way. Um, yes, they do all sorts of things. Um, they, they have these computers that are aligned with parallel space-time sheets where evil entities feed us with their artificial intelligence. So From um, parallel dimensions? Yes, yes. Not this one? Not this one. But they're here as well? Uh, the computer is here and then in the parallel dimension there's an equal computer at the same place and then they cool it down to a certain temperature and then the two timelines meet in the computer and the entities on the other side, on the, in the other space-time sheet, supply us with calculating powers or their technological realm. Um, this is what these quantum computers are about. And you can go to the lectures of the CEO of the company delivering and he will state exactly this. It's not a secret. And they yes. talk about entities also. Yes, they also talk about archons that are involved in the system. Um, they're quite honest about what they do. So is it the archons, this, what the Gnostics call the archons, Christians call demons, Muslims call the jinn, and many names for it, that are the controllers of this realm within our matrix, at least? And, and would you say, when we talk about parallel universes, would you say that all of the parallel universes of Earth, let's say, mm -hmm. Is that within the same matrix? No, 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 no. Uh, matrix is a different con concept. Um, um, let's first 
may, maybe take, take a look on archons and what this is all about kind of. We experience duality. Duality is a state of a planet where you have the collective consciousness of the planet based in the brain of the planet, which is liquid black goo, part of crude oil. So this is nature. It's beautiful, it's divine, it's in the divine order. And then certain planets experience duality, which means that a traumatized, non-incarnated planetary spirit is added on. So it's like, like within humans, if I should die and I'm not happy to go into the light and be reincarnated, then I have the option to have a look at you and say, wow, I would like to be your attaching spirit. And then I dive into your body and I start trying to conquer your body, getting control over it. And then you will feel irritated that suddenly you have thoughts in yourself that are not yours, but mine. Um, so you don't have to be an archon or a demonic entity to take possession. No, uh, no, a human can do that as well. You see this with the alcoholics. When an alcoholic dies and doesn't go into the light, he will spend his time in bars. And when somebody topples over because he's so drunk that he faints and goes out, then, you know, these non incarnated spirits dive into the body because they are still addicted to this influence of alcohol to re-experience it. This is what spirits do when they're lost. And this happens within humans and it happens in between planets. When a planet goes self-destroyed and the planetary consciousness is highly traumatized due to self-destruction by the species living on it, it can happen that survivors of the species collect the black goo of the planet, go on spaceships and make sure that another planet is infected by their black goo because they need this also to live there. Um, Please also just when you talk about black goo and you have spoken about it a lot, just briefly for people to really understand what is black goo. Um, it's a self-organizing black liquid consisting of main, mainly carbon um, hydrates, but also M-state uh, precious metals, uh, C60 carbon fibers, hollow carbon fibers, um, that is something similar to a DNA grid. A DNA grid has spacings of one millimeter. Uh, black goo has much smaller spacings in between the M-state matter and the M-state matter is actually what carries consciousness. So as a, as a, in a, within the biosphere you've got an M-state matter in a DNA, kind of using the, the DNA as an antenna to be able to communicate over the distance of one millimeter, which is cell size, average cell size. While within the black goo you have a very dense cluster of M-state matter in these tiny little carbon hollow fibers. Um, so it's also an antenna grid, but it's much more dense, but it also carries consciousness. So every biosphere is split into two mirror halves. It is the, we are actually the senses of a planet. We are on the surface and we collect experience. While the collective consciousness, the part of the consciousness that is based on this black goo that is part of crude oil, is collecting this experience and serving with blueprints for life, serving with instincts, and serving with everything that we don't have the time to learn because incarnations are so short, so when whatever an animal gets born, it immediately knows how to behave. How? Because it's connected to those collective aspects. This is the natural concept of black goo, and there are technologically modified versions of these liquids around. Would it be fair to say, if I just jump in here, that black goo is like the blood of the planet? Yes, or the liquid brain. But the blood is nice. Expression. And can you see it and feel it, touch it? 
Yes, it looks like crude oil, just that it moves on its own. But it's not the oil that they dig for. No, no, but, but sometimes you get portions of that when you dig for the crude oil. Like in, in Iran, for example, I know they, they have a quality, they call it non-refinable oil. They just pump it into lakes. And when you go to that lake and stand on the edge, it mirrors you and starts to talk to you. How? It's conscious and it is self-organizing. Have you had that experience? Um, partly. Um, I saw alien black goo liquefied from meteorites, where this is how it got here by a meteorite shower hitting 26,000 years ago. So I had friends who extracted that from the meteorite material and I saw it self-organizing. It looked like insect eyes and it moved independently and it had this kind of thrill uniting the two portions so it tried to fight its way out of the box it was in. So it is an alien entity in a way. It is a living organism but not incarnating it's it's immortal as a substance. We have seen something like that on the X-Files that popular television show in the 90s where people actually absorb or are yeah. invaded by this black substance even going into the eyes. Mm, exactly. Exactly. Is that what we're talking about This here? is what we're talking about and it, there's a lot of it around in the technological realm. It's used in computer technology. I, I remember Miles Johnston from Basis. He was working for, for uh, BBC uh, uh, fixing antenna systems and he had these black goo creeping around antennas modifying the signals sent out by BBC to overlay it with mind control signals. Wow. So this is what he found. Uh, Morgellon victims uh, um, have black goo coming out of their feet at times. Uh, so there's a lot, a lot around of it. This is all the alien type. The earth type is just underground and it's very friendly, very loving. Um, and this is kind of all okay. To have those two types here is duality. And we incarnate on this planet not to be, not to have fun, not to be loving and experiencing only good things. We're here for the thrill of it. So we decided to incarnate on a planet that is in this phase of going through a dualistic spiritual experience. Did we decide or were we um, hijacked by these archons creating a fake soul trap, a fake white light? Um, let's say, what, what, what re religions call heaven and they lure you into this beautiful feeling of bliss. You see a life review and then you're advised or asked if you want to go back and then you go back to a new body with a wiped memory, not being able to remember your past lives. And then it goes again and again because these archons supposedly feed on your energy, anxiety, fear, angst, what have you. I think this is a bit about gaming addiction. Imagine you meet a friend and you decide to play a game together. And in this game, one is a goodie, one is a baddie, and then you get involved into the plot. And then the game comes to an end. But by that time, you lost yourself to a degree where the gaming addiction is just stronger than anything else. So the question is, who is getting those players out of the game to call them back to unity? This is the big question and there is a resistance from the players to leave the field. This is what we experience now, the attempt to prolong this duality experience into a matrix to avoid humanity ascending into consciousness realms that are back connected with source out of duality into unity consciousness. Um, these, some of these players um, don't like that idea, so they try to basically create some, some side way where they can maneuver parts of humanity into a prolonged experience of not even duality. It's, it's also a monolithic control system because they don't even have the choice to be good anymore. It's not duality. It's kind of the evil version that tries to split off to keep things under control, pretending it's for the general good. Through that white light, 
frequency, heaven. Yeah, 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 kind of, kind of. It's it's not love. It's a replacement for love where because of they know that we haven't experienced love for so long, we would buy into it, mistaking it. Because the sensation, according to a lot of near-death experiencers, is a feeling of incredible bliss yes. and beauty. And they see their relative, dead relatives, looking their best. But it's, it's not love. Love is something else. What is love? Golden. The golden it's, light? It's golden. It's not white. When it's white, it's fake. <laughs> yeah. Also, bliss is fake. So when you wake up to understand this, and you work on this level, in this realm, in this body now, for all of us, and we wake up to this, then our consciousness are more prepared to say no to this soul trap or the tunnel of light and go to where? Basically re-identifying with your heart, with the inner heart chakra, and by this with your true self. For most of the people who are caught in this artificial structure of duality, the true self is more or less just observing while being identified with all these non-selves. Um, so, so the process is de-identifying from everything that is not you, which is demonic entities if they're still around, which is um, being solely identified with a fragment of the own soul, like being mental or being emotional. Because as long as we are this, the mind is driving us or the emotion is driving us. And the thing is, when we identify it with a heart consciousness, with the core of ourselves, then we still have a mind to think with and we still go through emotional experience, but we observe it. It's not playing us. And we, at a certain point, can also free decide what to feel. And we can tune ourselves into joy as a creational power, just by decision. I feel joy now. I feel anger now. You can start to control your emotions, not by basically fighting against your body. Everything is clean and clear and coherent. So it's a decision of the heart what to feel within the creational process, which is a completely different story. So this is where it gets, and there might be thousands of paths to get there, because every single incarnation, every single uh, soul has a different soul plan, what to experience, how to experience it. So people shouldn't be like afraid of not making the right choice, because eventually you will, or what do you think uh, will happen? Can you choose to go to source if you're aware enough or to some other it's, more peaceful planetary like, system? For, for those who know about film dramaturgy, um, it's like plot points. We have a number of plot points that everyone has. The first plot point is the decision to dive into this experience of separation. So we start to incarnate. It's our free decision. At a certain point, you, you reach your lowest point. This is where you want it to get to, to be able to experience a certain quality of separation. And then you decide, now I want to return home. The way down is fear-driven, the way up is love-driven. So these are the energies, the emotional signatures that pull us into the one or the other direction. And the turning point is a plot point. It needs a conscious decision. I want to go home. This is ex emotionally extremely strong, intense. You know, this turning point, uh, when I just think back at the moment when I made this decision, it still tears me into pieces and I need to cry because I want to go. <laughs> you know, this is, it's, it's an incredible intensity. It just, whoa, it's like turning a sock inside out. Um, this is one plot point, and once you made this decision, everything that happens to you puts you together again. But you need to go through that plot point. If you're not there, you're not there. Then it goes deeper down into separation until you reach that point. So if you're not there, just be aware that 
it will come at a certain point. And then you can return. Oh, it's just me inspiring you to make this decision right now when you watch this film. And then you can pick up the inspiration of how it looks like and how it feels like to make that decision and make it for yourself. And then your life will change, definitely. Because of these decisions in the heart are the most powerful thing existing. It is what constitutes reality. It is the constitution of reality itself. And, the, and this, this goes into natural law and universal law. Everything is in natural law, except when everybody agrees to ignore natural law. Then you might put your faith and your belief and your attention into a non-natural law, like we did with having a state that gives rules and punishes us. We steal and makes all sorts of completely stupid things. And to that's replace. more common law or This Roman law, actually. Roman yeah. law, common law, whatever. Um, it's, it's, it's an agreement between humans, basically with the intention to avoid karma. Because you, you can trick the artificial law, but you cannot trick karma. Um, so it's actually a black magic thing to be in these artificial law systems. And do you think that transhumanism, and I guess we just have to say briefly what that is, but that is in order to, to, be, to create robots out of humans, huh? eventually? Um, transhumanism in, in general, shortest description, it's the attempt to build an interface between human consciousness and AI. Um, in general, what they state is that the AI can serve the human. What they do is that the human will serve the AI. And the super soldier program was a, the precursor or the The, yes, uh, yes. This is, that. this is from black magic torture techniques to torture splits of a spirit out of the body uh, to have something you can program and do things in the astral realm. And superpowers also as a human in a way, right? They also talk yes, about that, yes, that yes, they have other abilities yes. that you normally wouldn't have. Yes. Strength, for example. Yes, yes. It's creepy what they can do. Mm -hmm. It's quite creepy. But do you think that this AI transhumanism, this whole agenda, and we're in the middle of it right now, or maybe we're mm -hmm. just at the beginning. Hopefully, I would love to suggest we, we can end this. But, mm -hmm. but uh, is this actually connected to the soul trap at the point of death when we die? The, 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 the realm mm -hmm. of, let's say, in between the fourth dimension because they would like to hijack human consciousness so you cannot make the choice fully consciously to leave and go back to source to break through the matrix i don't know how this plays out when we die i have no clue i know that the demonic realm the arcan realm had some control technology to keep souls captured within this planetary system but i can imagine that this is still part of the divine plan to create this space of duality where we are stuck to learn, to go through our cycles of reincarnations, to actually experience what we came for. Because once a soul is lost, it makes all sorts of decisions. You know, On the way down, it, it feels painful and creepy, so let's get out of here. But this is not the real soul plan. The real soul plan is always to go to the deepest point and then return. So being captured here might still be part of the divine plan that decided this is a place to experience duality. So this is kind of okay. I'm not in resistance against it. What I don't really like is this idea of not ending the game, of those who are addicted to it. And what they do now actually is they create these computer programs. It's sentient world simulations. It's run on DARPA computers. Um, and they have the avatar of us with self-learning algorithms to copy uh, avatar in the computer that behaves exactly like we do. And whenever there's a difference between the prediction and the actual behavior, the self-learning program rewrites itself until the match is perfect. 
the thing is that this only works with personalities because personalities are predict predictive. They run on reptilian brain patterns. If you have a true self acting, it's non-predictable. And then these uh, computer programs fail to work. This is why certain people can't be taken over by the avatar. Because they can't even develop an algorithm that meets somewhere. And I've been through these experiences sitting with people when crucial decisions were about to be made in group dynamics. That suddenly I blacked out and came back and I was in a different reality. People around me were talking completely different stuff and it was obvious that they, they have been talking about other things for the last 10 minutes. But I was sure I was just away for a nanosecond, like bing bong, here, there. And then I looked around and there was another guy that I know he was his master shaman, that he's definitely not writable by the avatar. And I just looked at Dan and I asked him, did you get that? And he said, yes, fucking creepy. Because he had exactly the same experience in the same moment. So I was not the only one to black out. All the other ones were just rewritten with a completely different story, believing that this is their past. So through shamanism, you can actually also learn to go well, go out of your body and go to another dimension and to experience things in other realms. Yeah, yes, it's, it's, uh, I would call shamanism the science of the soul. They actually make the real experience with the real thing and learn to apply techniques that are reproducible. There are some shamans who say that they're actually dragon slayers. Yes, the, the astral realm is quite beautiful. <laughs> Where you actually go for these demonic, well, entities or reptilian aliens that we've heard a lot about. Yes, we, we've been there kind of fighting the, the wars in the astral. Um, but it's... The astral is a strange place because it's, it's not bound to um, space-time. It's also, you know, if, if you think about densities, like the steps of spiritual development, every density has its own astral realm. And they are already split. So if you think about all these dark stuff like archons, duality, uh, black goo, in in the fifth density, in the astral realm of the fifth density, all this crap does not exist anymore because it's beyond duality. So and you can only visit the astral realm that belongs to your state of spiritual development. So if you are completely embedded in duality as a self, the astral realm you experience will be quite creepy. If you are not embedded in duality, if you're embedded in unity consciousness, your astral realm is completely beautiful, divine. There's nothing creepy to be found there. So there are different astral realms and we can't agree on one reality in the astral. We can agree on one reality still in the material plane because it's superimposed. But I haven't seen an archon for ages. They don't just don't cross my way anymore. What do they look like when you say see them? Or is this something you feel? Have you ever seen a vision of it or gone to that other place in term in remote viewing or through astral traveling or whatever yeah, it is yeah, you do? Yes, I, I see them with a third eye. There are basically three main species in, in, the, in the game. Uh, or for me, they were in the game. It's the Kundalini snake that embeds along the spine, connects sexual chakra, base, base chakra with the mental area, bypassing the heart. Is that an archon energy? That, that, that's an archon, yes. One, really? one of the three main archons. The other one is Yabulon, the god of Freemasonry, the spider demon. He sits, uh, the, so, so the Kundalini is in the first and the seventh chakra. The spider is in the second and the sixth. So it sits here as an insect in, on, on the pineal gland exactly and on the sexual chakra. And then there are these Khtulhu 
everybody knows it from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, the captain. This is kind of where this image was taken from the Cthulhu, who is um, partly octopus or, or um, Krakow being. Um, Krak Krakow? Kra um, it's not an octopus. It's the one without a body, also eight uh, arms swimming in the sea. Oh. The Kraken, is Krak it something Kraken, like yeah. in the Greek mythology yes, yes, or something yes, like yes. that? Um, oh. And this is sitting, sitting in the third chakra. But what about the reptilian beings? Is that the snake kundalini energy you're referring to here? Is that like the same? or? Yeah, it's a big mix of all sorts of things. You do have reptilian appearance when people are mental. When they're completely controlled by personalities, which means they are completely controlled by projections of the reptilian brain that come out from the excess bars and control the entire being by an overlaying personality structure that controls the mental field. But what about those who talk about a reptilian uh, civilization from the Draco system, yes. the Draconians? Then, then, then you have, this is kind of being reptilian as a human, then you look reptilian because you're run by your reptilian brain. Then you have the alien species that are reptilian, that play one or another role. They are friendly ones, loving ones, evil ones, all sorts of reptilians because it's just one of the big creations being reptilian all over the universe. Um, and then you do have shapeshifters, which is a technology controlled by the Archons to have a physical uh, creation that can move and act within the material plane. Um, so they can shift because they're holographic in structure? No, they are... Um, it's, it's a cell culture. It's actually the first creation was bacterial colonies that morphed into higher beings. This is how the entire biosphere was created. Actually, it's a bacterial slime um, with a high diversification of cells moving as an entity. This is what the first being uh, uh, was made of. Actually, single cells that united to something bigger. So this is the first creation. And from that first creation, there was a highly developed species with high intelligence living on this planet. It's, they're called the old ones. And they were technology, had a technology as well. So they had slime bacterial entities that could be programmed to be one or another being. If they needed to swim in the ocean, they became fishy. If they wanted to walk on land, they morphed as a colony into something walking on land. And this technology was hijacked by the Archons when they established themselves on the planet. And those are the shapeshifters. So it's not cloaking? No, no, it's real material Transformation. Transformation happening. Is this what David Icke talks about also yes, when yeah, he talks the, about uh, shape-shifting? Shi this is what he mainly talks about. There is the clogging uh, uh, technique, but this is mental. This is about the control of the perception of the other. Mm -hmm. That you make him believe that he sees something else that, uh, then, that, that is really in front of That's him. It's a projection actually this, like, like a, a hologram, right? Yeah, in a way. Yeah, yeah kind of controlling the perception and then uh, it's it's not a hologram it's not in the air it's just in the perception this is what some reptilian species do when they want to move down here and want to not be seen as what they are so there are many 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 different effects that do exist but they are completely different so would you say that some people if we move into psychology we talk about psychopaths, mm -hmm. but there are also other um, layers of psycholo uh, in psychology, mm -hmm. such as, let's say, borderline uh, or mm -hmm. being a narcissist, narcissistic personality disorder, or multiple personality disorder, which goes mm -hmm. into this is borderline. Uh, which is what? Well, it's also it's that's that's what they create with mind control victims, mm -hmm. huh? Mm -hmm. But I mean, is that? And we don't want to offend anybody, but is this uh, 
an Archon takeover also, some kind of possession? Okay. Narcissism. Um, when we face an ugly situation as a child, r repeatedly face an ugly situation, we need to cope with these situations. So we don't react spontaneously from the heart, but we try to do this and that. And the reptilian brain remembers the solution um, and embeds this solution as a action re reaction pattern that automatically pops in when the situation is given. If I want to have something and uh, I ask for it, I get punished. If I steal it, nobody realizes that I, I took it, then my personality will, personality will be a thief. Because whenever I need something, this automatized mechanism pops in and I do what the personality is like. And this is not controllable. Personalities play the body and nothing can get in between. It's an automatized reflex like cycling on a bicycle. It's the same part of the brain that does this. You know how to do it, you do it, you don't think about it. There's no way to step in. And so, so everybody that is going through traumatic childhoods that lives in an uh, uh, ugly environment automatically develops a false self, which is consisting of personalities. And the beautiful thing for the dark realm is that they are predictable, 100% predictable, because they just consist of um, reflexes. So you put a trigger, you get a result. Um, so traumatizing us is part of the black magic setup to create a humanity that is controllable because whoever is predictable is controllable. So there you see a concept, a trick, something that is played on us. We have the possibility to find the trauma. This is bioenergetic internal work. If I realize I run on a personality pattern, I can't control my behavior, I harm other people or I lie or I do nasty things, in an automatized way, I can look into myself, see where this reflex is rooted, find the trauma, make my peace with my past, heal that trauma emotionally by feeling through the pain that originally brought me into this behavior, then observe this internal personality, how it acts in situations, just by imagining them or by going through them in real life. Learn how it feels like when this bioenergetic flow jumps into your mental field to do this and that. And then you make the decision to remove that personality. So people that usually cannot be, let's say, changed if they have a narcissistic or borderline personality structure or disorder, a diagnosis, mm. can be changed in that way. The, the personality-based things, yes. They, there, there is this option of self-healing um, that goes by removal of the personality. So I just realized where it is, I went to the trauma, I made it pop out by triggering it and then I grabbed it on this astral plane, pulled it out of the excess bar, hold it in front of me and just made it go up in flames in violet light, in, in a violet flame. And from then on this automatized behavior was gone. So this is one possibility. Uh, it works for most of the personality based uh, conditions. Narcissism is different. Uh, in narcissism, the problem is that the traumatization is done in a way that actually the moral compass becomes the self. There's no self. There's not even a personality. There's actually this, this part of the spiritual setup that is observing and giving advice. That has the ability to basically find a way between ideal reaction and realistic reaction. 
So know? it's imitation? It's no, no, it's, it's the moral compass. The, Freud called it uh, the über ich, the, um, what is it in English? Yeah. Um, the, the, the over the, eye. The, the, over, the, the, oh, yeah. the over eye becomes the self. It's not the advisory panel, it is the self. And it doesn't really have personalities, personality structure in that way because it's not a projection of the reptilian brain, it is something else. And this is why they say uh, um, that, that the um, um, narcissists, that these people can't be cured because their perception of the world doesn't allow questioning themselves because it is the questioning structure itself. Because right. then they would have to recognize and accept that they actually have something they would have they have to work it's, on. It's just you, you, if you want to change yourself, you need a mirror, and this ability of mirroring is in between the eye and the super eye, and then you can basically go to some point where you can make decisions and change what you see. If the eye is completely shattered and broken and never comes into action and only the super eye took over this existence of I am perfect, you know, this is this narcissistic core and I need to be um, recognized as perfect to maintain consistency. So everybody needs to see me as perfect. Um, there is no, the, the main mirror is shattered and only the mirror that is supposed to give a reflection is there as the self. There's no space to question this concept. This is why it's so difficult. So what you need to do or what these people can do, uh, the, the entire narcissist thing is actually the perception from the victim perspective. If you have a narcissist and you suffer from him, describing him as a personality is from the victim perspective. And you can't offer this victim perspective to a narcissist to decide for self-healing. You need to acknowledge his perspective. And in the perspective of the narcissist, this is the covert narcissist that gets success, he needs to find his vulnerable self. And then he needs to work in self-healing on the vulnerable self, teaching himself that he is lovable, that he is worthy, that he has beauty. By just doing this internal reprogramming to get out of this uh, destroyed self from the childhood by, its, by his own powers. And then it's not that the behavioral patterns are gone, but the the pressure that keeps them up is gone and then miracles can can be possible in social interaction when when they realize no i actually i don't need to gaslight anyone anymore i don't need to devalue anyone to feel more valuable because i found my value in myself and that's actually also even something that just let's say ordinary and regular people need to do because they are kind of attacked by the system at the moment, especially during this world crisis that we're facing. And there are so many amazing topics and I'm looking so much forward to a part two and possibly a part three with you because there's a world of topics that we really need to we, discuss. I would love to go into detail. We can do that online. And so we definitely quality, must do that. But yeah but it's been really great just to throw out a lot of amazing topics a lot of amazing areas here yeah. but i just want to say that i it's been a real pleasure to be here in your place in in germany thank you so much harold kautz previously known as harald kautz Vella. thank you so much you're welcome thank you Thank you so much to Harold Kautz-Villa, now Harold Kautz, and thanks to all of you for watching Age of Truth TV. You can support us by clicking onto our website, ageoftruth.tv. And please like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell for notifications. 
You can also sign up for our newsletter on our website. On behalf of the Age of Truth TV team, we thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon. Great. Wonderful.